Now we want to look and see how we can make adjustments on this. So we talked about our timing is going to be this belt right here. So for timing adjustments for the hook, you're going to have to be able to move this gear. And if you look right in here, we have a couple of little set screws where we can adjust where this gear is. So that's how you can adjust your hook timing. The needle left to right position is going to be something that the motor, um, that the computer senses because it knows the position of your stepper motor. So it can set this based on that. And a lot of times when you start up your machine, it'll take this needle position and it will jam it on one side. And when it jams it on that one side, and you'll hear it, you'll hear like, you know, that kind of like, it's trying to do something and it's not working. It jams it to one side until this motor stops spinning. And that way it knows where that full travel is. And then it'll take it back and put it right back in the center. You can watch it start up and you can see that a lot of times on your machines that are computerized. That's a way of cheating the system. So they don't need a sensor down here. They just need to run it against the, the side until the motor won't go anymore. And then now they know exactly where this motor is. They know where the needle is and then it puts the needle back in the center position. There is another sensor up here and that's for when you're doing, um, you know how you do buttonholing and you have to bring down that little tab. So there's a sensor back here to know when it's in buttonholer mode. The tension assembly is very similar to every other tension assembly that you see. You just have two discs that are sandwiched in there together. And then as you adjust your tension, it changes that, the spring pressure. See how I'm adjusting it and it's, as I'm going up in numbers, it's compressing the spring. And as I go down in numbers, it's loosening the spring. So we'll keep it in the middle. Now, what's our metal? Well, apparently there's a trick I can do with vinegar and I've never tried it before, but let's, let's give it a try. Okay, we got some alum, we got some vinegar down there. And we're scratching some stuff and I'm looking to get any sort of reaction whatsoever and I'm getting nothing. Okay, so I got, I didn't see any reaction at all. So I believe that this is not zinc. This, uh, I believe it's an aluminum frame. So we're gonna say that's aluminum or aluminum for a lot of my watchers that are not in the good old US of A. So our findings are that this machine is made simply and cheaply it is a modern machine, so all machines are going to be that way, all modern machines. Um, we have a good torque flow path to that needle, and we have a good um, materials that are used in the construction. All the things that are in here are very similar for all machines, except for the bushings. I like the bushings in here better than I like the bushings in Singer and Brother machines. I think that the longevity of this machine will be better than those as well. The only thing that always concerns me with these machines is the longevity of the electronics. So that's an unknown. We don't know how long these electronics are going to last. And that's the unknown that we get into when we buy these electronic machines. Uh, maintenance wise, I am not happy with the ability to do maintenance. What I will do is when I put it back together, I'm going to look to see if I can reach this right here because this is the only place that they feel that you need to oil from time to time. So I want to look and see if you can get to that. As far as cleaning goes, if you're a home gamer, this bottom cover right here is actually easy to take off. You have two screws and then you can get into your hook area and clean it and you can even lubricate this end right here, this uh, bushing right here. So that's a good thing. I think that's good. You also have a cover, this cover right here on the front, that's easy to take off. It's actually just one screw. Um, and I say easy, but there are clips. So you, you'll feel like you're breaking something when you take it off. 
and actually with clips sometimes you likely are breaking something but it is able to be taken off relatively easily and you can take off this front cover and then you have access to remove any thread that got stuck in here or oil these uh, critical areas when i say critical areas i mean your needle bar so that needs a drop of oil and then you have this part right here this where your needle bar connects to this arm right here this linkage and then you have this linkage up here which needs a little drop of oil and then you have that which you might be able to reach through and oil that felt pad right there and that will hold oil in it so that leaves these two bushings over here and they actually have a pretty stable load characteristic the load is not changing on these two depending on your fabric because these are just the only load really is this belt right here the timing belt and then for needle adjustments let's if you look up here you're gonna have these screws right here that'll move this plate for your needle adjustments and you can get to that when you pull off that cover so that's good for maintenance and that can this will be your needle front to back meaning your needle distance to the hook so that's a good thing to be able to adjust and then your needle needle bar height so that's something that is typically the first one to go out of whack on a sewing machine is your needle bar height right here so that screw right there you can loosen that and then adjust your needle bar up or down and there's specs between the needle itself and the hook distance so overall not a bad machine a little bit more difficult to maintain but they have offered some access to areas to maintain your dirt and your crud and all of your uh, fibers from sewing are all going to collect down here in the hook area and you can get to that by pulling off that end and you can have access to through here to be able to vacuum out underneath there so that's a good thing and then you can lubricate this bushing and then probably can lubricate this one like i said we're going to take a look at that once we get it back together not a bad machine for a home machine it's a little expensive but janome um, they run a little expensive compared to other machines uh, in another video we can do some testing to see just how strong this machine is and how much power it takes to operate and we'll geek out a little bit and uh, I can't guarantee that's gonna be the next video but it will be a future video that we do that
Okay, I can see that felt pad right in there. So that's a good thing. You can reach that felt pad if you need to oil it. You can just reach your little oil right in there and oil that felt pad up. 